for the presentation. And 
the, they follow our maneuverable uh, path trajectory till they hit their target. They are unpowered vehicles. Here we can see some advancement in this kind of technologies, in particular the Avangard system, which is a Russian system, and uh, which has a top speed of Mach 20 and a range which is estimated to be at least 10,000 kilometers. In the other video you can see the main peculiarity of these weapons, the fact that they are maneuverable, and also there, are, there were some pictures about the American counterpart. The second type are hypersonic cruise missile. What's the difference? Cruise missile are powered missile, which means they use an engine. There are many types of engine that are uh, currently being developed for this kind of, of missile. In particular, we can think about ramjet engine, scramjet engine, uh, pulse detonation engine, or hybrid motors. Here we can see uh, two, uh, two weapons of this kind, the Russian Kinsel or Dagger, and the one uh, below is the X-51 Wave Rider from the American. Here are some of the advantages that we, uh, well, the main advantages that we want to focus on. Uh, first of all, speed and maneuverability uh, lead, lead to defense penetration, which means that these weapons right now cannot be stopped by any kind of existing missile defense system. And this provides survivability of the weapon. Also, rapid response time. The rapid response time of these kind of weapons is a fraction of existing weapons, which means that they can deploy very, very fast. Also, destructive power goes to the power 2 of velocity because it's mostly related, related to kinetic energy on impact and is not related to the mass of the warhead installed. Finally, no risk because they're operated from the ground and range. It's not just about kilometers, it's also about traject trajectory that can be changed mid-air. I will now leave my colleague the word. Okay, now I'm going to uh, sum up some potential roles that we identified for these weapons. Uh, as you can see, uh, at first we have the engagement of the time-sensitive targets. Uh, the more hard and deeply buried targets, uh, suppression of air defenses, plus additional defense layer from an air defense system. Among them, we are convinced that the first one, so the engagement of time-sensitive target, is the most suitable uh, for a military application due to the characteristic of a time-sensitive target, which is a target which um, requests uh, an immediate response. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some tactical applications that uh, we talked about. Uh, the first one, uh, consider um, a worst scenario and considering the capability of um, uh, carrying some uh, air-to-ground uh, hypersonic bombs, uh, we could have the strategic advantage uh, of um, hitting any point of our scenario in a very short time. Uh, as uh, we've seen, I'm going to the second tactical application. Uh, we know that the current development of these weapons is focused on grain to ground applications or air to ground applications. Nevertheless, what about air to air? There are some studies uh, that are showing that uh, such missiles uh, at those speeds uh, have a plasma cloud. Uh, this plasma cloud um, brings to the plasma step. So, um, you know, uh, all the radio waves may be absorbed. By, by this cloud, uh, making the missile uh, invisible to radar. So imagine uh, that we have uh, an airplane with the, a missile that can reach Mark 6, Mark 7, and it is invisible to radar. Uh, that's a very exotic idea. From uh, a more strategic point of view, uh, I'm going now to present you some future possible scenarios. Um, considering all the characteristics and advantages that Marco explained to us, uh, we know that these weapons um, are able to uh, penetrate the defense layer uh, uh, systems of the nations, um, thus compressing the, uh, the time uh, for decision making. So there are some studies that show that the current response time to a, a conventional ICBM attack is 23 minutes now, but in an ancient scenario it would be only 6 minutes. So uh, we need a new decision making pro process. Then, uh, in such scenario, the equilibrium serialized on MAD, so something that is um, really like the Cold War, as my colleague said. And so we have a dangerous uh, that relies on the uncertainty of the intent of the nations. 
And at last, we should consider that uh, these missiles and bombs uh, could be a kit both with conventional warheads but also unconventional ones. So nuclear warheads, biological warheads, uh, and so on. So the dual use of them uh, should be considered too. So what about countermeasures? Uh, you know that uh, here, the broad sum of them, there are these three are the most obvious ones. So the turrets, something that is really similar to the Cold War. But then we have the launch of warning posture and is extremely dangerous because it means that the nation will uh, try to anticipate the, the behavior of the other nation. So uh, the instability uh, will increase in such scenario. And then we have the devolution of decision making to a lower level. So we have a lower authority that will be able to push the button and that's another point of instability. So, we think that we should pursue this one, so the development of anti-hypersonic defense systems that, as Marco said, uh, up to now they do not exist. So we should fill the gap in technology uh, and we should think about application also in this military sector, so both for weapons and anti-hypersonic defensive systems. Yeah, before concluding, we would like to say that also in our work there was a, a synthesis of the state of the art in hypersonic uh, technologies and weapons, both in Italy and worldwide. But for, because of the time we were given, we just passed that on. Okay, uh, at last uh, we can say that um, these technologies are spreading at an extremely fast speed. Uh, so here are some tips, some our ideas that major nationalities should undergo. So the first one is the need of space force, or a space force. So we know that the future conflict uh, will have the focal point in space, so we should be aware of this uh, paradigm shift, and an initial starting point may be uh, the institution of a space force, just like some nations uh, such as uh, Russia, China, or the US. Also, cooperation is fundamental in, in, in this topic. So, what we think could be a right solution to start talking about more of this type of weapons is to institute a joint NATO commission to evaluate the situation. So, what we are sure about, just to conclude, is the key is time. So, we must be aware of these problems, we must be aware that this technology is spreading with all its consequences. <laughs> Uh, and we should face them in a proper way. Uh, and finally, uh, we are sure that in the future, me as a pilot and my colleague as an engineer will deal with these groundbreaking technologies. Just before ending the presentation, thank you for your attention. We would like to give our regards to the association that let us be on this stage today. So, thank you to Associazione Aeronautica and the Sezione Luigi Broglio. Thank you to the Distretto Aerospaziale della Campania and thank you Center for Near Space.